Well, what I think about a lot is, you know, working in the garbage management profession, waste management, right? Driving the truck or being on the truck. I mean, I, I see the guy in my neighborhood and he's on the truck and someone's driving around and he's, you know, putting the bags in the truck, um, got ear pods in, looks pretty happy, not worried about tokens or entry join or domain stuff or windows updates i mean none of that the, the garbage bag goes in the truck right i mean i don't like to lift heavy things but i'm thinking well maybe i could drive the truck or maybe what do you mean no i'm not saying i'm quitting i'm just saying you know it looks like uh looks like he's having a good time Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about some troubleshooting things you can do uh, if you're using uh, the device migration solution uh, that we recently released. It's still in beta, so we are working through stuff, uh, but some of the more common problems have to do with like joining the new tenant and the provisioning package, getting the bulk token. So we're going to look at a few things today um, that will hopefully help us solve those. Look, you're, no, you're not listening. I'm just saying the options on the table. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so the first issue I wanna look at is when we're using the Windows Configuration Designer, I know some folks are having a problem getting a token. So let's go to provision desktop devices and try to get one. I'm gonna speed right to account management. So we hit enroll in Azure AD, we turn on the refresh, and we click get bulk token. Okay, so at this point we sign in tenant you may have to mfa in make sure you're unchecking the box and hitting no sign into the sap only and what does happen sometimes is you get this bulk token retrieval fail right um so why does that happen typically this happens uh for two reasons one let's go to the tenant and take a look so let's go to entro.microsoft.com with the account you're trying to sign in with and you go to applications and you can go to enterprise applications and you'll see the windows configuration designer now oftentimes what you have to do is go to permissions right and you have to grant the consent even though it should be doing that the first time you log in it, it might not so we have to go down here and accept okay and after doing that we're going to go ahead and try again. Okay, and you may still not get it. So what do you do when that happens? If that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to open PowerShell up. I'm going to actually open up ICE. It's easier to look at. Okay, so here in PowerShell, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to create, and you're going to want to make sure you have the Azure PowerShell module installed. You're going to want to create the new Azure AD service principle account enabled is going to be true. Now the app ID, and this is going to be static, and we're going to enter that in here. And we are going to say app role assignment required false display name is going to be Microsoft Azure sync fabric and if you want to add tags you can say windows active directory integration so we can run that oh, and i have to call connect azure ad first makes sense that'll connect me to the tenant steve.com Okay, now we'll run this. And now we have the app ID. Okay, so if we go back to the Windows Configuration Designer and try again, we might have to restart it because sometimes there's some cache. Okay, now you can see we got the token successfully. So it just means the tenant is missing that uh, app ID somewhere. So um, to thanks to Leo from our Discord community for pointing that out, and that can be really annoying. So now that you have the token, 
let's say you're having uh, actually let me go back to ice let's say you're having an issue um, signing in to the new tenant right because I noticed some people kind of get stuck where it's left the domain or it's left entra and now you're trying to sign into the new thing and you, you, you can't get in so in that case what we have to do is first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our provisioning package file location so wherever you output your package so you're going to find the customizations xml and we're going to open this up i'm going to use notepad plus plus and we need to get our token so this is the token so let's copy that and let's store that in a variable called BPRT. Okay, so we're gonna need the AAD internals module for this. Um, if you don't already have it, this is it, internals. I'm gonna import it. You would just install it if you don't have it. Okay, there we go. It's a cool little title. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to use that to get a token. So we want to say get AAD internal access token for Azure AD join. And we're going to use the bulk primary refresh token to get that uh, because it is an empty string BPRT. Oh, I didn't run that. Okay, run your variable and then try again. And now we have a token. Uh, to join a device. This is similar to a user access token, but this came from the bulk primary refresh token. So let me just store that in a variable. Token equals uh, here, token equals get access token. So now that I have my token, now just to kind of show you what's in here, because yeah, that's not super helpful. The way a token is constructed, I'm going to open up to go to JWT token decode. Um, so this is kind of a cool site. I'll put it below jwt.io. You can paste your token in and it'll parse the information about it. So you can see here, if you take a look at what we have, we were given a token, it's a user impersonation token for, look at that, package random grid at rubixdev.com. So this is actually the username that's associated to the package in Entra. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Um, where are we looking here? I just lost it, there it is. So let's go grab that, copy. And if we go back to Entra and go to users, I'm gonna search that and there's my user. And this is actually what's associated with the package. So if we wanted to see like, you know, sign in logs, um, actually don't, you would actually go to non-interactive and I'm going to do last month because I didn't do anything today with it. Okay. So we can see, I have a bunch of sign-ins in both device registration, which is, here we go. The device registration service, um, and Microsoft Intune enrollment, right? So basically this package as this user object is responsible for signing in. So this is the first thing for you to come look at is get your token, you can find your package name and just see if it's signing in or not. And if it's not, it'll tell you in the logs if it's getting caught up in possibly conditional access, right? Um, and that'll give you some more information about it. Now, let's say you are having an issue where it is getting caught in some kind of conditional access. Now I've been testing quite a bit, obviously, so I have a lot of these users. So if I were to get rid of that GUID and just do package underscore, you can see I have a ton of users here. So what I would say to do, because you might be changing GUIDs, you might be using new packages throughout your migration, is I always recommend making a group. And I would call this group uh, migration package members or users. And you're going to make this at a dynamic user group and you can just add the query for uh, user principal name starts with and you can just do package yeah, package underscore and you create that group and that's going to go ahead and um, grab all those for you so let me show you what i have here 
So I have my group migration package users and you can see it has eight members in it. So if I go to members, it's collected all those for me. All right, now what you can do with these is you can go to your conditional access policy. So if we go down to conditional access, um, and this is gonna vary by tenant to tenant, but let's say for example, you do have a policy um, that's assigned to all cloud apps. Let's say I have something that's targeting uh, Office 365 or it's targeting all cloud apps for some reason, right? And that could be kind of, you know, dangerous because it's definitely gonna lock me out, especially if it's assigned to all users. You wanna go ahead and exclude this package. So you wanna exclude, and we're gonna add the group. Yep, migration package users. So I can now add this group and they are excluded from conditional access, so I won't get caught in that. Okay, and the last thing we wanna look at is when we're looking at the destination tenant in Intune and we're going to devices, we're going to go to windows and enrollment. Automatic enrollment. Now I am a firm believer that this should be set on all because there are other ways to block personal devices and this will be the most frictionless for you. But if you can't, or if your organization insists on setting this to some, make sure you are including that group we just created, the migration package users. This way they will be able to enroll um, even though they're not the end user. So hopefully that sheds some light on the issue as far as signing in and issues with the bulk token. I'm also aware there's an issue with a lot of folks uh, being able to domain join, uh, leave the domain, unjoin the domain. Um, that's something we're looking into. It seems right now that the issue has to do with current policy on the machine. So, you know, even though we're breaking line of sight to the domain controller and enabling the built-in admin, there may be a local policy left behind from group policy that's preventing that admin from disjoining, getting that access denied error. So we are working through it. I appreciate everyone doing testing, putting some time into this. I think it, overall it's going to be really helpful uh, when we're done here. So hopefully we'll have an update uh, for you for next week and uh, we'll be seeing you.